Welcome back and welcome to the Halloween special for 2016. So the other day my wife and I picked up these tombstones from the dollar store for you guessed it, a dollar a piece. And they came with little metal clips that allows you to clip them into the ground. But of course, you know, that didn't really hold up too well in the wind. So I remembered a trick that I did for a neighbor a few years ago where I just screwed them to a piece of wood. And there's nothing really special to report about that. You can get the idea, it's just a couple screws. But as I sat here the other day and looked at this, I said, you know what would be really cool is if I can make this thing light up a little bit. Uh, for example, like the little skeleton here you could see at the top of Trick or Treat. Wouldn't it be cool if I could have like little, I don't know, maybe red LEDs in his eyes or something like that? And I thought that'd be kind of neat. You know, there's a spider on one of them. This one over here has another set of spooky eyes. There's also a little skeleton at the top of that. So I said, there be got to be a way I could do that. So being the geek I am, I took the little lights that I had here. These are just color changing LED solar lights. I just stuck them in there for just kind of an effect. But after a while, they tend to go kind of dim. And by the time it's dark enough out here to see them, you're not going to really obviously see them. Plus, when I have the porch light on, the way they're situated over here, they're not going to really light up that well. So then I thought, well, maybe there's just a way I can just poke some, you know, red LEDs behind the eyes or something like that with a little simple battery and on and off switch. And then I thought, no, I can do better than that, of course. So I said, well, I got a bunch of these things lying around. Maybe I can hack one of them and start to mess with it. And then my mind started going crazy. So I'm going to go back inside and show you something that I came up with. And we're going to come back out here in a little bit and put it all together. Before I go inside, I just put a couple quick light coats of black spray paint on the piece of wood in the background here just to make it not be so uh, noticeable. And I did a little bit of just quick touch up on some of these things where some of the white from underneath was maybe showing through or some of the spots looked a little kind of yucky like in here there was just some extra white like overspray uh, over here there was a little bit too so I just cleaned those areas up just a touch. Now if we go back to last year's Halloween special which should have a link in the description below or a card up here at the top of the video but I made this little circuit board and there was just eight green LEDs with an on and off switch and a 9 volt battery in fact I ended up using uh, eight double a batteries to get 12 volts uh, and of course this has a lot longer of a life so i figured it would work you know the whole week i had the pumpkin outside plus halloween all day and you know i figured maybe i can just do something simple like this just a set of eyes and then i said again maybe i have one of these old led kind of lights here you know one of the solar panels maybe i can hack out the solar panel and put some kind of a little circuit involved in here and you know make it come on on its own with the battery or something like that and I said yeah it'd be kind of cool if I could make the thing blink how could I make it blink you know and I said also I thought maybe I have some something around you know some parts that maybe an, an LDR a light dependent resistor that I could use to as a photo sensor there's got to be some parts around here somewhere right so I ended up looking up at the desk here and I said, oh, I have an Arduino. I can do something with this. Now, for those of you who don't know what an Arduino is, it's a microcontroller that you can program using a pretty easy language to learn once you, you know, do it a few times. And you can get it to do a whole mess of different things. Uh, I'll go over just very quickly what's going on here. This is a USB connection. Right now it's just providing power, but that's how you would connect it to a computer to upload the program that you want it to run. Right now you're looking at a LED cube. So this is a three by three by three LED cube mounted on something called a shield. The controller is actually the little thing in the case down below. We'll get into that in just a second. The shield is, um, uh, there's various ones you can buy and they just plug into the board and there's, without using a bunch of wires. And you can build a project, plug it in, and then program the project or whatever. That's a whole subject of another video again. But this will just come off and we can get to the basic board that's underneath it. 
And here are the two pieces separated. Again, there's just pins on the bottom here. This would just plug into the top. But this is the main controller. So you have the USB input. You also have a separate power input here. There's a reset button. And then you have these headers here and here. Some of these are inputs and outputs. Some of these are power in and out. And we'll get into that all as we start building a circuit. But this is basically a chip that you would program. You can pull it out with and build a new circuit with the supporting components like the crystal and the, all these uh, capacitors and whatever other little pieces are here, power regulator. And you can build a new circuit and integrate it. So in the case of these uh, RGB cubes, you can actually get much larger ones that are kind of all inclusive. Uh, once you build it, you turn it on and it just runs. And But with these little boards, you can kind of build them however you want. So I said, all right, well, I got one of these and I have an idea what I want to do. I wonder if I have one of those uh, light dependent resistors. I wonder if I have uh, you know, all these pieces to build this here without having to go out and buy anything. And then I remembered I have this kit. So I said, oh, let me start digging through that kit. So I open it up and of course you have all kinds of just jumper cables in here and resistors, some sensors, and breadboard. And then I found that yes, there is an LDR in here. And I'm very happy about that because then I can obviously experiment with the circuit. So I'll uh, kind of segue into it a little bit. So as I was looking around on the desk, I remembered I also have this uh, beginner's Arduino book over here, actually written by uh, the people over at the Make, I believe. And I said, oh, we'll take a look at that. Did some poking around on the internet, see if this is a feasible thing. And I came up with a couple different things. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the non-essential stuff off the desk right here now. And I'll show you what I came up with for parts and for schematic and everything. So obviously you can see here's our parts list. So you'll need the Arduino, two red LEDs, two purple LEDs, one 100 ohm resistor, one 180 ohm resistor, one 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, the light dependent resistor, a breadboard and of course several lengths of jumper wire. The schematic is pretty simple. We're going to connect the 5 volt um, pin between that uh, between the LDR and the pin A0 on the Arduino and then that junction is also going to connect between the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor and ground. Uh, and this will make sense once you look at the actual board. And then on the LED side, we're going to run these LEDs in series. So we're coming from pin 13 through a 100 ohm resistor through the positive, so we'll make like a rail, and we'll connect them in series to the ground. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side with pin 12 with 180 ohm resistor, and we'll have the red LEDs over here, and we'll just make one ground rail. So we should have a total of six pins that we'll need to connect on the Arduino. and. I have another list of code. I'll just put that on here real quick. The code part's up here, we'll get to that later, so don't even pay attention to that for now. But um, part of the code I wanted to figure out, uh, I'll just mention real quick since it is in view here. I did some research and it said that the average human blink, uh, the time between blinks is uh, 100 to 150 milliseconds. And then the actual time between you blinking so the, du the duration between blinks is two to 10 seconds. So I have that up in the programming up above there. But at the five volt input and the 3.2 volt drop purple LEDs, I wanna run them at 10 milliamps, which is below the 20 rated. That's where I came up with the 180 ohm resistor. And uh, same thing with the red here. That's those are a 2.2 volt drop. And we're running all those at 15, a little bit above 15 milliamps at a 100 ohm resistor. Now these values I already had um, set up earlier because I have a, a table here in the wall of just different resistors that I have with the different LEDs that I know I have in stock just to make it easier for when I do projects like this. But if you wanted to see the math of how to do that, it's basically just uh, Ohm's law essentially. But anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this project together. I'll kind of go through it as I do it piece by piece. Now my Arduino is in an acrylic case. This is something you don't normally get. 
but you could see there's cutouts in this case to access the different components here that we need to get to. But if you look over here, these are the actual different names of the pins. So whatever it says next to it will coincide. So pin 13, 12, uh, the ones with this little squiggly in front of it, that's your AC, or I should say your analog pins. The rest of them are DC um, or, you know, they're AC or DC. So that really matters uh, later in other projects. But for this particular one on this side, we'll need the ground pin pin 13 and pin 12. This is obviously your ground connection for the LED bus and then pin 13 is where the positive, uh, actually the resistor and the positive connections for the purple LEDs will go and 12 will be for the red LEDs, resistor, so forth. Uh, also note if you see this little tiny dot right here, this is actually an LED and resistor already set up to pin 13 here. So you can actually use this for um, testing the circuit out using the basic blink sketch, which is basically you know everyone's first step with these things. Uh, over here, you can see there's a 3.3 volt out, there's a 5 volt out, and a couple more grounds, a volt in. And then over here, are your analog inputs, A through um, A0 through A5. So we're going to use pin A0. So again, we're using ground 13, 12, 5 volt ground, and A0. And that's the only thing you'll need off of this board. Taking a look at the breadboard real quick, these pins going down here in these rows, these are all connected together, as are these over here. Obviously, there's no connection between them because there's a break in the middle here. There's also no connection between these rails up here and any of these here. What there is up here, you can see there's positive, so all these going along this way are positive. All the ones below here are negative. You could use this to make a, a power bus. There's also one at the bottom. And normally what you would do is you would build your circuit on here just by inserting the components. Uh, if you had an IC or any kind of chip, you would put that directly over this gap here so you can access the pins on both sides. So we'll use, obviously, this. Now, I mentioned um, having a ground bus and all those different things. We'll actually use this power bus here for the, like the red LEDs, and we'll use the uh, one up here for the purple LEDs. So we have a ground plane already. Um, and since they're hooked up in series, this will work. The only thing we'll need to do is jump this bus over here to one of these pins with the resistor that the positive uh, electricity will flow through. And taking a quick run through the different pieces we'll need, there's a few lengths of these jumper wires. We have the three different resistors, so the LDR, the, the LEDs, and I also have an LED tester that we can use just to make sure these things light before we put them into circuit. That's always a good idea to do. Um, now I'll put the actual color codes of the resistors down in the description. These tan ones are a lot easier for me to see. The other ones are much harder because they're blue and the colors kind of are harder to see, but I'll try to put those down there. Now these are, I'd much, yeah, <laughs> resistors drive me nuts. That's just the whole subject for another thing, but we'll, uh, we'll start to put this circuit together. Like I said, the, one of the things I wanted to do is just, we'll test these out. Um, LEDs, the longer lead is your positive, the shorter is the negative. We'll just slip this into our tester, and that's our red. I kind of bunched these together, so I kind of forgot which colors they are too, so it's good to test them. There's our purple. And of course, there's the other red. So this leaves us with the last purple, but I do want to check to make sure it works. Bam. Now you could have put those all in there at once, but of course it's more fun to test them one at a time, I think. All right, so let's get this thing assembled. I kind of organized everything real quick just to make it easier for me. Um, I put the appropriate LEDs with the appropriate resistors and the LDR with its resistor. So what I want to do is, is I want to put the LEDs on one side of this and put the LDR on the other side of this. Um, we'll start with the LDR. Now I'll put this in the middle to bridge this gap. The resistor needs to go between ground and this rail, rail, so this is all connected. I'll zoom in just a little quicker here. And the reason why we need that is because we need to tap off this connection here between the two of these components. And then the last 
piece over here is going to go to positive. Now since that's the furthest away, we'll use a long red jumper over here and we'll plug that in just like that up at the top, um, anywhere where it's secure. And then the other junction up there we'll use a long green wire for. Now this is the one that's going to go between the two of these and this is what's going to connect to the pin A0 to uh, read the value here. Then of course we have the LEDs. Again, the longer one's positive, so we'll insert that into the positive rail and conveniently the negative's right next to that. So we'll do that here. We'll space this one out a little bit, put that there. We'll do the same thing with the other color at the top up here. Just put those in right in. And the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take the resistors and jump the positive rail down at the bottom here to any anywhere at the top up here. We'll, we'll tap off that momentarily. We'll do the same thing with the other one on top here. Sometimes these thin resistors get a little fiddly. Other times they go right in. And then uh, we'll need some short cables to connect to, to the board for the positive. So, uh, and that goes in the same line as the resistor. We'll do the other one like that. One's gonna go to 12, one's gonna go to 13. It doesn't really matter which, um, but in the coding I, I have purple on 13 and red on 12, and I have an, an example at least, so if you try to read it, you can understand it. And then we'll need some ground cables because we do need to get that uh, ground bus on both sides connected to the board. So I'll plug those in like that. And that's pretty much the whole circuit. Now all we have to do is connect it over to the Arduino. Um, you should be able to see in here the different pins, ground, 13, 12, five volt, ground, and A0. And Essentially, it's the way we built it. Everything's kind of lined up just the right way for us. So, uh, just to make sure we have this all oriented right, I can go ahead and plug my LED tester in like this, which is convenient. And there, you can see the purple ones are on the bottom. So this pin we have plugged in is gonna go up here to 13 and we'll double check the red ones work and then that's going to go up here to uh, 12. And we'll take one of the grounds. This one will stay down here because it's just more convenient. We'll plug that into the ground rail which is conveniently right above 13. And then on this side over here, this ground is going to connect in where I had that right down here at the bottom. And the long green lead over here, this is the sensor lead. This one's the one that's gonna go to A0. And then the last one is the positive five volts that go up to the top for that LDR. And that's just gonna go in the five volt rail up here at the top. And that's it. That's the whole circuit. So we can give this a test to see if this works. If I want, I can just bundle these wires up kind of nice and make them uh, not stand out so much but again they're a little fiddly so we'll just leave that but I'll, I'll get a nice close-up shot here so you can see them all connected so there's ground 13 and 12 and there's your 5 volt ground and a zero connections now running through some basic and again really really basic coding in fact this isn't even in the proper format to make it actually run like this so don't type this in it won't work um, I, I'm hoping I should be able to put that down in the description. Um, if not, I'll have a link down there to a Google Drive or someplace where I can post this public, publicly for people to follow. But I basically took some coding that I found. Uh, it's kind of uh, general purpose, free range kind of stuff that you can use. But one of it was a nightlight code, which is what I use for the LDR portion. And the other one was the uh, blink code. That's again, the basic code that everyone learns when they learn how to play with Arduinos. And I just tweaked it. And honestly, it took me a few hours to get this to this state. And there's more to it, obviously. 
this is just the gist of it because this portion here actually um, has a second part behind it which is the same kind of thing just stuff's flipped but the the thing about the code is I went through a bunch of different things to make this do exactly what I wanted and I had um, some really nice pattern to the blinking going on in fact actually at first it was off and then it would blink on but then I figured it'd be better on and then blink off because that looks more natural and uh, after playing with it and everything else I found that the way the coding was initially writ written that I couldn't get it to turn back off when light hit it it worked perfectly when the light went out but when the light went back on it wouldn't turn the LEDs off so that was kind of a bummer so I just kept playing with the code um, now one of the things is this is going to run off battery so there's a good chance I'm just going to shut it off at a certain point anyway but I want to make this where if maybe a flashlight shines onto the tombstones like a kid shining flashlight the blinky lights will go out and then when they shut the flashlight off it'll turn back on again so it kind of makes like a spooky effect like it's almost interactive but looking at the code here this top section up here is just setting up which sensor pin it is and that sensor pin wording is going to come up in the coding but it is a zero and again that's the LDR and um, we set up the sensor value of zero so that sensor value is actually going to change every time it reads this pin there's a little setup section here where we're telling the Arduino what pins we're using and I just mentioned that one's purple and one's red and then this is the loop so once this initialization happens this loop process will run and this will loop indefinitely until something tells it to stop um, so what we're doing here is we're reading the value of a0 and if the value is less than 320 we're going to digital write in other words change the state of pin 13 to high high meaning on and again so that's pin 13 is purple so we're turning the purple LED on we're waiting 150 milliseconds and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to look at the value and then we're going to determine whether or not to turn on the red LED and then after that happens we're waiting six seconds and then it's going to write uh, again to 13 low meaning off wait 150 seconds write to 12 off and then do another delay and then when it gets to this point it's going to repeat back at the top if this was the actual code that's it um, and what that does is it gives you an effect when the light shines it's looking at that pin and seeing all the, the code you know it's up in the 400s I don't need to turn on and it won't but then the minute it drops down because it's going to keep repeating this it's going to go what's the pin it's 400 stay off it's 400 stay off what's the pin it's 450 stay off and it's gonna it just keeps looping and then eventually it's gonna go oh it's 315 turn on it's 315 turn on wait shut off shut off turn back on turn back on shut off shut off and that's all it's gonna do and it gives you the effect like it's just a blink um, I, I initially wanted it to like blink 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 you know something like but that it it was just a lot of coding to do it this way I'm sure there's far other better ways to do this this is definitely not an efficient way and the LDR is not controlling the Arduino itself it's just controlling the actual light circuit so if you want to be real efficient there's probably a way you can have this going to like a sleep during the day and that's far beyond my knowledge of this device this is just like a real beginners course I guess you could say on how to do that um, and by the way, powering this, we can go back to another project, which is sitting just off camera here. This is the 8D cell battery pack that I made. Again, uh, in the description, you'll find a link to this. Uh, mentioning descriptions and cards real quick. Sometimes I put annotations in my videos, and if you guys watch them on a mobile device, you're not seeing those annotations. So things that I mess up or whatever, they may be on the screen, but you can't see them because you're on those devices. So uh, I, I'm trying to remedy that by using other me, uh, methods of uh, making my corrections, but for the best viewing um, experience, I guess you could say, you're, you're better off looking at it on a, on a desktop, honestly. But anyway, so we'll plug into this and we have the indicator light here. But that'll last uh, all night, probably last all week if you just left this running. 
the draw on this was really low. I ended up using my multimeter and came up with um, like 60 milliamps, if I remember correctly. It wasn't very high at all. And speaking of multimeter, people have asked me how to use these things. One of the things that I needed for this particular project was to test out those pesky resistors that I had. Uh, I mentioned the color codes. These blue ones are hard to hard to find the color and luckily I had the bag matched so I could just reach in and know that's what they are but if I didn't and I didn't feel like fiddling around with the colors I could always put my meter up here in ohms mode and it'll tell me it's 98.4 um, I know this came out of the 100 ohm bag so that's you know the closest you're gonna get to that and you know I don't normally buy these blue ones but they came with the LEDs Whereas the other ones, the uh, tan colored ones, are just much easier to read. So I'm going to put the color codes in the description for the tan standard resistors that you'll buy. Switching over to the other side of my room, we can take a look at the computer screen here and get an idea of how the actual coding works. And I did put some annotations over here on the side so you can get an idea. And this isn't supposed to be uh, anything too complicated as far as Arduinos go. But there are a couple things to point out over here. Um, one thing I didn't mention, there's this serial dot begin 9600 over here. This is actually for a serial monitor, so we can actually read back the value of the LDR on the screen using the serial monitor. But um, just taking a look at it, this is all the code, by the way. There's really nothing else to it. This is the part of the loop that I mentioned. So this section up here all the way down to the bottom here is your loop. This will just keep repeating indefinitely. And all it's doing is, is turning the LED on, waiting a little bit, blinking it, and turning it back off again. And pretty much that's it. And it's just going to keep looping through. There are two spots where it reads the pin here and here. And it also will display those results twice in the serial monitor as well. But that's it. That's the whole code if you want to pause the video here. You can uh, certainly copy it down that way. If not, it'll be in the description. But you do need this top piece up here, the, the integer section, the setup section, and then the loop section below it. So now I need to connect the Arduino to the computer and write the code to it. Up at the top of the screen here, is a check mark for actually compiling the code and making sure it's it actually verifies and then the other one is the upload button so i have everything plugged in i'm going to click that upload button and we'll actually watch this upload live now i'll zoom out just a little bit because i do have the arduino right here below it now this is currently still running the led cube code as you can tell by the little blinking light to the left the green light to the right is the actual uh, power indicator. Now, since there's gonna be some LEDs hooked up to that board there, we're actually gonna see them light up. Um, one of the things I did was, was actually disconnected the ground cable for the row of LEDs and the uh, LDR. So nothing, um, nothing shorts out, I guess you could say. But I'm gonna go ahead and plug the top ground in and uh, go ahead and program this. I just set the upload button and that's it. So now if I connect the LDR back up over here, we should get this to light up. Now it does have to go through its cycle. So there's our purple lights. You see there's the blink. Now for some reason red's not working so I have to just uh, mess with the circuit here and see and see why. It's, it's possible that I don't have the ground connected. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we can see those lights should blink. So the time between them is a few seconds and they kind of just go on and off. And obviously they'll be spread much further apart on the actual tombstones, so it'll look a lot better. But if I shine my light on it over here, hopefully that value is high enough. I might have to turn the uh, LDR towards it a little bit over here. Now when I tested this, I wasn't as far away from the light. Okay, there, now it's off. And if I swivel this back out of the way, they should come back on 
when it reaches the point where it rereads the pins. And it will continue to do the blink routine. Just like that. And then again, once we introduce the light and it reads that state again, it should shut right off. Perfect. Okay, so now the thing is, is going to make this into an actual tangible socket circuit kind of thing that we can, uh, we can mess with. I mentioned sockets because I was actually thinking of putting some kind of a, a pin system. I'll show you what I'm thinking of when I get back to the tech desk. But I have a, a couple ideas of how we can make this into a miniature circuit or as small as possible. I don't have a way of making the Arduino circuit on the breadboard. So that rules that out. But I can solder up some resistors and LEDs to some leads and, and what forth. Um, also the LDR, this is the only one I have. So I'm going to use every length of this uh, lead that I can and solder to the very end of it. So when I go to reuse, I can just cut off what I soldered to and I'll still have some pretty good length to it. Now in my parts bin, I have a couple pin headers that came with some smart board cables uh, tucked up here. And you can see they have these little headers and then in here are some wires with a socket end on that you could use to make you know, jumpers and various different things. And I picked up a bunch of these back when the shack was closing down. I figured I have a use for them and I do have a use now for it. So what I'll do is, is I'll break off some of these connectors and I'll actually solder wires directly on. So I could just plug this directly into the Arduino to make it a lot easier for me. Now for wire, I have a bunch of stuff here that I bought from eBay. This is uh, old an assortment. And I also have some scraps that I could use for some shorter stuff. But I'll need a uh, set of wire to go to one tombstone, another set to the other, and then everything else should be contained within um, you know one little area in the middle. Um, part of me also thinks I could actually use a power supply and just have it sitting outside with an extension cord ran to it and that way I can have multiple voltages there so if I want to run this off of the 5 volt and I can also have the 12 volt tap there to maybe run some strip LED lighting that I have around I'm not sure how to figure that out the day of um, because of course Halloween's on a Monday and I have the Saturday and Sunday beforehand to do any final final decoration or anything like that so the actual powering it is going to be one of the things towards the end that we'll have to figure out which is the best way to go but for now, we'll worry about the wiring inside here. Now there's not a lot of draw on this, so we don't have to worry about super heavy gauge, but this wire here should work fine. If I remember correctly, this is 22 gauge. I went ahead and cut myself some lengths of wire to go out to the different LEDs. Notice I used a bunch of different colors here so I can indicate what's going on back and forth. And then on the Arduino here, I actually have some of these little pins plugged in. Of course, I can't get the things out now, but um, you can see them in up here, so I'll, I'll remove these with a pair of pliers and we'll solder directly to those and that'll uh, make it easier just to plug them in and out of here. Heat shrink's going to be our friend with this project and since, like I said, I want to save the leads of the LDR here, I'll, I'll shrink wrap most of that so we'll just have the ends exposed. Now what we got here is the 5 volt line, which I'm using red, connecting to one side of the LDR. I have a black wire going to a, the uh, 4.7 kilo ohm resistor and we're going to connect that resistor to the LDR and the connection between these two we're going to tack a third wire on which I'm using orange and that's going to be our sense connection. So here's our light sensor circuit. Again the red coming in is the 5 volts comes through the LDR up here, uh, comes back through and then the resistor is referenced to ground and then the orange wire taps between the, the two resistors to get the reading here. Uh, what I'll do now is sleeve some shrink over the top of here, shrink it down and I'll do the same thing down here. Now you'll notice that I did stagger these joints a little bit so this should make this a little bit of a neat installation up here. We're working with three different thicknesses of heat shrink obviously that we have the smallest stuff on the first and then we'll sleeve the larger one up here to cover over the positive connection I'll put this one down here just to make sure that it doesn't short out where it doesn't need to and then the last one is actually going to be some of this wide stuff over here and that's going to cover over the whole thing so I won't need to actually worry about this here all right the inner pieces are shrunk down 
the outer one will cover over and in fact we, we can actually get this just to line up at the end there perfectly and that'll make that nice and neat. Before I get too far ahead of myself with the outer sleeving on this, I'm actually going to put the pins on the end of this because I'll actually sleeve this whole thing as one assembly to make it a lot neater. Here we have the wire twisted, heat shrunk on one side and pins on the other. You can see the arrangement I have over here, so the positive and negative are on one set of pins and the sensor pin is on the other. And I oriented these in such a way so they would kind of already line up how they're going to go. But I'm going to give them one final little twist over here and I have a length of tubing that's already the length of this wire. I'll sleeve that through and get that whole heat shrunk together now. Moving on to the LED side of things, I went and took all four LEDs and mounted, uh, to uh, solder some leads to it. The orange one is the positive, the black one's the negative, and you'll notice there's no resistor on here. That's because I'm going to put the resistor in line. Um, I wanted to have some room to space these out, so I put these little leads on there. It's definitely going to be more room than I need, but this way I can position them wherever I need and, and have some room to play with. So I'll go ahead and put some heat shrink on this. I'll, I'll do the same thing I did the other time. I'll put a small piece over it and then I'll probably put a larger piece over just to get both wires covered. Haven't quite figured that part out yet. Um, but what's gonna happen is, is the grounds are gonna connect here, the positives are gonna connect. And then I have some wire over here with the resistor already soldered to it. And you can see that just over here and then we'll connect the positives so it'll come off like a y it'll come up one side come to the resistor and then y off to the two leds and that'll make that nice and neat now that i got one side heat shrinked we'll put a, another piece over both those connections and get that nice and tidied up and here's the result of that effort you can see this will make it easier to insert into the tombstones later on. We'll just make a little hole and poke this through. And I gave the, the wires a nice twist just to keep them nice and neat. Next thing would be to do would be to get these wires attached to the ends over here so we have some nice leads. Here's the purple LEDs. You can see the ground side over here is already connected and heat shrinked. The other side here we just have the resistor in the middle. I'm going to put, of course, heat shrink over the top of that. We have plenty of spacing here to spread these out if I need to. And uh, this will all get twisted down here as well, just for neatness. Uh, I may or may not sleeve everything here. Um, I could do it from the other end and bring it down and connect it in the middle. But these I might just leave bare like this, just twist it up. Uh, unlike the sensor wire, which I completely covered. Um, the sensor wire was a little better to cover because there were three wires, you know traveling through the whole thing so it's easier just to do that these may not be necessary although i have lengths and lengths of the stuff here in by the roll so i have plenty of uh, material to do it i'll figure that out as i get to it managed to put the sleeving on the led end over here you can see that does make that a lot neater so of course i'm going to want to go the opposite direction here and cover this whole thing up here this will, uh, of course, help with moisture too. And I'm going to leave uh, maybe, you know, a couple inches at the end uh, exposed so it'll be easier to work with that end once I get to it. All right, got everything sleeved. Just have to go to the heat gun and get it shrunk. But you can get an idea how nice that's going to look now. And then we have color-coded wires so we can get an idea of what we're looking at here. And uh, that junction piece is pretty neat. The only thing that could have made this any better was if I had the heat shrink tape that actually had um, the adhesive inside of it, which would melt, of course. It's almost like hot glue, and that would really uh, waterproof everything, but I'm not really too concerned with it. I mean, everything is isolated from each other, and uh, I don't anticipate in this getting too wet. Here's our two wire loops. They came out pretty damn good, I think. Only thing that's left to do now is get these ends connected to the pins that we're gonna use for the headers here. Um, now the brown wire and the green wire are actually going to connect since those are our grounds. So I'll twist those together and then these are going to go to one pin each. Uh, just as I go to test everything out, it seems that I had a bad connection here. And when I cut the heat shrinking away, it seems that my resistor just snapped right off at the base. 
Those little blue resistors I was using honestly don't have the, the thickest of leads going in and out of them. So I'm going to use a different resistor. This is a little bit of a better one. You can see it's got some nice thick metal to it. And I'll just uh, bridge those two connections. Unfortunately, I don't have an easy way of getting any heat shrink down here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, is just wrapping this part here with electrical tape. Um, it's not the best way to do it, but it's definitely better than trying to have to undo this whole thing um, I don't really have to go too far to do, doing the whole thing. It's just, it's more work than, than it's worth to, to do that. And the electrical tape will seal it up just fine anyway. Okay, now we're in testing phase. I managed to wrap over here the broken resistor. I wrapped that with electrical tape. And it seems that there was a little bit of a bodge job on my one red LED over here. Um, not sure what happened. It did work before I finished everything and it didn't work after I replaced the resistor over here so I just uh, cut the tape back over here just resoldered it and it works fine but you can see now it is running the actual program that we intended and I have the LDR over here now if I point that towards the bright light over here hopefully it's bright enough to shut the lights off and that's one of those things we can always go into software and change, but you can see it did work. And if I cover the end of it up over here, the lights immediately come right back on again. And it just matters of where you are in the cycle with the delays when it's going to actually read again. Also, you can see the orange LED lit up over here, so that gives us a good indication that this thing is working. And again, if I uncover that sensor, point towards light over here wait till it gets to the next read state, you see they all shut off. So the next thing to do would be to actually get this mounted into the tombstones. Um, unfortunately, it's a little late for me tonight to be able to do that and it's dark. So I'll have to wait another day to do that, but that's pretty easy. I'm just gonna make some holes and poke the LEDs through. Um, I did leave enough length at the top over here for that to happen. And we'll, uh, I'll pull these out over here so you can see how these ends came out. Now the one with the positive and negative, I managed to pull the center pin out and then the ones with the read pins. Um, now I, I could have just put one pin on here, but I did three just to keep it stable in the socket. And I also put a little bit of heat shrink over the end over it. Now I did need this to be a little bit flexible, so I, I left it like that. And uh, the end over here works out well. And this is just short enough where it's just gonna kind of face forward out the front. And then the other end over here, you can see that worked out well. Uh, no, I didn't key it with the shorter one. I should have put shorter on ground. I mean, you could adjust these anyway, but you know, this little piece of plastic from heating up these pins, it kind of got a little funky. So I didn't want to apply too much heat there, but you could see everything again is nicely heat shrinked. This is all one solid piece over here. And uh, I'll move the Arduino out the way. And there's definitely some nice length of these wires over here. So this is gonna go together pretty nicely now at this point. But it's nice having all the wires black. It'll make that hide a lot better. Um, the spots with the electrical tape may stick out a little bit more because it's glossy, but the rest of this is kind of like a matte black. I'm not too concerned with that. But I'll probably end up putting this in the middle and then just fishing the wires over to either side. And then connecting it, it's just a matter of just plugging it back into those pins. Now what I'll have to do is, is put some kind of maybe white tape or something around this so I can actually mark these connectors on here and make it a little bit easier to connect it in and out. But considering, you know, I'm working with parts that I have on hand here, this came out pretty well so far. Um, I know it looks like a bunch of wire in a little box, but that's basically what it is. I mean, I could have, uh, if I had more parts available, I could have actually made a shield for the top of this that we could just plug directly in and it would have had plenty of ins and outs for all these LEDs to connect to. That may be something down the road I build. But this, um, you know, I'll be able to take these next year once I'm done with it and pop it back out of the tombstones. After all, they only are a buck. I'm not sure how long they'll last in storage because they are just thin styrofoam. But I can reuse these next year very easily um, in fact, I might possibly get some better quality tombstones that, you know, be definitely more reusable and then I can actually permanently mount these into it. But for now, this is going to work. 
So we'll fast forward to the next day when I have some light outside, we can get the rest of the project well, It's put been together. a few days since I last touched this project, and I figured now it's time to finally get the actual LEDs mounted into the tombstones here, simply because, well, it is after all Saturday, and Halloween is Monday, and I'm tempting to get this video up on Sunday, which is the day you should be watching this, if, um, if you're watching it the day I posted it. But at any rate, so we're set up outside in my backyard. Obviously it's dark out, but I have plenty of lighting here to illuminate the subject. And you can see I have the Arduino, um, the proper USB cables, the uh, LED harness and the LDR harness that we made up, as well as the five volt battery pack that you can see to the right there. So now the idea is going to be mounting this into the actual tombstones. And uh, I'm trying to figure out which ones I want to do. Now, unfortunately, this one here is black, whereas the other ones are black with white embossed text and whatnot on top of it. And the they look much better than the black one does. And if I see if I zoom through here, you'll see what I mean. Also, since these things came from the dollar store, they're not that very well painted. Um, and one of the things that happened since this was sitting outside for a few weeks before I even started doing this project, uh, and uh, it was a couple days since the last footage I shot, you can see all of these are straight, but the very last one to the right over here uh, is not only coming loose from the screw holes down at the bottom over here, but it's also starting to warp a little bit. And the disadvantage to that is, this was one of the ones I wanted to put uh, eyes onto, you know, right onto that skull, uh, skeleton skull right there. But, you know, it kind of adds to it a little bit because you get that, uh, you know, broken effect where, you know, when these stand straight in the line, and the camera really isn't giving it any justice right now, but when they stand straight in line like this, it looks like that one's in a little bit worse shape and again, in reality, you know, this would be a much longer piece of wood, an actual two by four, uh, eight foot, you know, long, and I could spread these out a little bit more, but you know, it's a Halloween prop. So uh, we'll, we're not gonna make it too trivial. Uh, you can see some of the spots that I did the touch up paint on it uh, actually stand out a little bit more than it did when it was just the white. Unfortunately, it looks like the paint kind of ate away at the styrofoam. But anyway, I'm kind of digressing from the subject here. Let's get some holes made in here where the eyes are gonna go. Now, um, we'll start with this set over here. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is go grab my drill, because that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. I mean, they are styrofoam, but I don't have a hot knife or anything. If I did, I would just poke it through with a hot knife. But we're gonna get the drill, and I'll start with this eye right here, and then I'll do the next one here. And we're just gonna put a little beady dot in the middle there. I'm not sure what color I want to use. Remember, we have purple and we have red. So maybe we'll make this one the purple eyes. And we'll zoom out here and get up to the other tombstone here. And maybe we'll make his eyes red, um, which I think would be pretty cool. Because it kind of spaces them out. They're every other one. Um, I could do the spider, too. The spider, there's one over here. And then there's also one right here. But being that I'm using the five millimeter LEDs, I think it would be better to put them into something larger, as in, you know, the set of eyes over here. Um, I don't have it right now, and I might not be able to dig it out in time, but I was anticipating on lighting these things up externally with uh, another light source. It's kind of like what we have shining on it now, but using maybe a green light or purple light or something a little bit more creepy looking uh, and putting the actual light sensor behind but I'm, I'm gonna refrain from doing that, I think. Uh, I'm just gonna leave these as is. Um, I might actually use the other light someplace else, like maybe under my deck to give it some accent lighting or whatnot. But anyway, back to the project on hand here. We'll get zoomed in and get these holes made. One of the other things that the camera isn't actually picking up right now because of the lighting situation is there's a bunch of spider webs strewn between all these tombstones here, which is really cool. Um, from walking from the opposite direction with all the light shining down on it, you can actually see those uh, little webs as the light reflects off them. So that's pretty cool. I'll try to preserve those because they may come in handy later. But anyway, I grabbed the drill and you can see I got my handy dandy set of indexed drill bits here. And what's good about these is they have these little holes. So I'm actually going to use this to tell me what size I'll need for these LEDs. 
And to show you these things again, just to refresh your memory, um, you can see that there's the two strands that meet in the middle and split out at the end, and then each one splits out on its own so you can separate the eyes. Now there's plenty of room on these. I can definitely uh, put these into those units there and then uh, you know, really spread this out if I want. So I'll, I'll definitely save this for next year or for future projects, for no doubt. But as far as the size hole goes, we're probably gonna wanna use something like a 1560 fourths or 730 seconds. Um, those should be fine. We're just going to poke this straight through so we don't need it to be terribly too large. We do want to have some kind of resistance so it stays in there. Um, I may even be able to go as small as 1364. So let me start with the 730 seconds actually because I think that's the good middle of the way to go. Well, as can be as expected, that's uh, some very soft material, obviously, to drill into. The blade kind of wanted to like weeble wobble around a little bit, but I got the holes drilled, no problem. Um, now we're just going to poke those wires through from the back. That's fundamentally it. You can see them poking through just a little bit. If I wanted to, I could dab some black paint in there just to uh, make the white not stand out as much, but you know, I'm not really too concerned with it. I might actually go and get real good quality tombstones before next season, um, once the season's ones goes on sale perhaps, and revisit this situation and make a nicer one, I guess. But for now, this is gonna do pretty nicely. So I guess what we'll do is just uh, change the camera around here a little bit and go take care of the other one on the other side over here. It's just gonna be the same procedure. Okay, now that I got all the eyes installed, um, I went ahead and just hooked up the Arduino, which you can see here in the front frame. We have a USB cable running from the back, which is where I have my battery, just to keep it out of the way. Obviously, all this stuff will be on the other side of the boards over here, but you can see right now there's nothing lit up. If I cover over the LDR, we should get some light on these eyes. Uh, now remember, it has to go through its cycle, so we have to wait for it to do that. Of course, it may be just a little bit too much light because of everything um, bombarding it over here with these three big floodlights I have. So perhaps I'll have to shut those off. This is also a good way to fully test out to make sure the LDR is indeed working. So one by one, we'll kill these lights over here. We'll get a better sense of how this thing's gonna work. Last one I have to pull out. And of course, now it's too dark for you to see on camera. You can see there we go. There's two sets of glowing green LEDs. And of course, now the camera's gonna go out of focus because of the dark here, but uh, there's your blink. So the first little green LED closest towards the camera is the LED for the Arduino. The one in the background is the one for the power supply. And then obviously you got the blinky lights here. Let me try to go to a manual focus mode here so we can uh, show you these lights just a little bit clearer. So you're going to get the idea once I turn this main light on here of how they'll shut off. Now, this is my interior shed light, which isn't very bright. Um, not bright enough to set the LDR off, obviously. And that's fine because we do want some kind of ambient light to be able to see these things. But then once I actually turn this light on, we should see them shut off when they get to the next point in the cycle, just like that. So that's pretty good. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Let's uh, show you that again. I'll shut these off. I'll shut the inside lights off here so it's really nice and dark. And when it gets to the point in cycle, bam, there they go. Now the two here you're looking at, one seems like it's a little brighter than the other. That's just because the way they're oriented. Um, ultimately, I should probably get some uh, hot glue or something just to hold them in place perfectly. In fact, I might just go do that. Um, of course, I'll have to run back inside and get the hot glue gun. But we'll get a nice close-up shot of the red ones over here. Now, honestly, I like the red ones the most. The purple ones are just bright. But the other ones over here, they look pretty cool. In fact, uh, they're kind of set back a little bit, but you kind of get the, the, the skull kind of effect. And they're bright enough where you can see it in light. But of course, anytime there's any kind of bright light on it, they will, uh, they will shut off. All right, let me go run inside and get the hot glue gun. 
The easiest way I came up with to glue these in was to just lay them down on their faces and glue them in this way. Um, but the advantage of this is I can actually run the wiring along the back of the board here, make it uh, pretty neat, I guess you could say, make, a, make it hidden as best as possible. And uh, you can see the other ones up here. I still have the hot glue gun gluing, uh, heating up. But yeah, I also have to make another hole for the LDR if I do want to pop out through the front. I haven't figured out exactly where I want to put that yet but that's something I do have to do. All right, got the glue drying here. Uh, you can see I have a couple citronella candles turned upside down just to hold the wire down to the board, um, just, just because. But anyway, while I was waiting for this to dry, one of the things I decided to do was just take the hot glue gun and make some fake spider webs with it. And this is a pretty f uh, easy thing to do. You just wanna take the tip of the uh, hot glue gun and basically just touch it down to one of the boards here like just dot it down and then drag it across over here real quick and dot it down and bring it back and forth and just repeat that process and the whole time you're doing it you're just giving that trigger just the slightest little bit of a squeeze and if you do it right the drop of hot glue will hit the surface and then as you drag it in the air the finest little bit will come and you're not going to do it like low like this you're actually going to drop it and bring it up high and then bring it back down so you can actually see there's quite a bit of strings back and forth between those two tombstones, and it looks pretty good. I'll probably do that uh, again on the other side, but the actual eyes here just have a good claw behind it. Uh, there's this heat gun, uh, this hot glue gun, I should say, actually has two different heat settings, and unfortunately, I left it on the higher setting. So that caused the styrofoam, as you can guess, to kind of melt a little bit. So the holes got slightly uh, enlarged, but I just ended up you know, sitting here just, you know, blowing on it just to get it to cool a little quicker. Um, you can actually see if I zoom back out again, the other set of eyes over here actually has a battery, uh, the battery pack sitting in front of it just to kind of hold it in place. Um, so far, so good. So what I'll do now is continue what I'm doing with the little fake spider webs right here between these two, and we'll get this thing turned back up. And here is the final result, uh, and I am pretty happy with this. Of course, just like anything, it can be improved, so that'll be something that I will probably revisit maybe next Halloween. You know, we've uh, done two of these projects already, uh, the last one obviously being the jack-o'-lantern that we lit up with the green LEDs, and now these guys. So, of course, I'll just have to amp it up next time. Um, ways I can improve this particular project? Well, we could use better tombstones maybe made of a denser material that would be easier to drill and insert the lights into to make it a little uh, uh, easier. Um, we could also actually build a bare bones Arduino circuit, which of course is just the actual Arduino chip. The, uh, there's an uh, uh, oscillator, there's a couple capacitors, I'm sure there's a couple resistors, you know, your basic components, a uh, 5 volt regulator, of course, to power it. But once you get that built, we can actually make an, a small circuit that would have all the stuff inclusive to it that we could put into a little waterproof box, let's say, battery pack included and everything, and just sit it behind one of these tombstones. Um, if you go back to the wiring harness that I made, yeah, the wiring harness is nice. You don't really see any of it now because of the way it's hidden. But what I would like to do is actually use maybe thinner wires or something that's actually a little bit easier to work with so that way we can actually contour the wires to the back of the tombstones here and you don't really see it at all. So that may be some, some things to, to look at. Um, also, we could play with the programming a little bit, of course, and make it uh, more efficient, I guess you could say. Um, or we can do things like, you know, make them blink a little randomly. You know, that stuff I'll have to play with programming wise. Um, and just to show you the, how the fake spider webs came out, they look pretty good. They're just like strewn across. Of course, they're going to pick up light a lot more than the regular ones would, but it gives the effect I want it to. Um, these eyes came out pretty good. They're not aimed exactly the way I would like them to be, but they are a lot better than they were initially. Um, it's, it seems better if you pull them back towards the back of the tombstone rather than have them bulging out in the front. When you pull them inward, it actually makes the light more concentrated, I guess you could say, and it's, it's a lot nicer looking of an effect. Whereas if they bulge out, the light kind of just scatters everywhere. Uh, of course, we don't have any 
uh, fake spider web between these two tombstones, but of course they have it again over here on this side. And the, the red ones are my favorite. That, that came out the best. It definitely gives you the idea like something's glaring at you with these uh, horrific demonic eyes and it's just blinking. So what I'll do now, just to show you how the back came out, instead of moving the camera and having to move all the lights and everything, which I really can't do, I'm going to go over here and spin this board around so you can see the back side of it. Now what I did here was, is actually took the rubber bands that I had on the power supply and used it to mount the Arduino directly to it because it's heavy, it's a nice stable base. That also allowed me to, you know, plug this in right. You can see the power coming out of the power pack up into the Arduino with the blue cable here. And it's nice because I can keep this spool nice and neat. You can see some spots where I just put some quick uh, hot glue on the back of the board just to hold those wires on. And then right here, you can barely make out the little silver wire, but they are actually twisted together over here. And the LDR is actually sitting right here on the side of that battery pack. Uh, I'll zoom in just a little tiny bit. So, of course, since it's facing all these bright lights, it's not actually operating right now. But this will work out nicely because then I can actually just stick this um, a little bit under my deck. In fact, um, I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like um, on Halloween, but I'll probably end up putting this in some kind of a bag just to keep any moisture off of it. And of course the wires will come out the hole in the bag and then they'll go up to the actual circuit there. And we'll follow one of these up to the eyes here so you can see how they look. Now you can see these from behind. Um, if I had some more time and, and this was the more permanent install, I would actually just hit the back of that with some black uh, spray paint just to keep the light from leaking through the other side. But it's not important. After all, you're not gonna see the back side of this. And that's all I have for this particular video. Um, I'm not going to have the time to put this out in the lawn and set it up to show you how it's going to look out there But for that you could basically just go back to the beginning of the video and see how I had it set up It's really not going to be any much different except you're just going to have a long bunch of wires coming off and a battery pack That'll probably get set under the deck or maybe under the front stairs or something like that But if you have any suggestions on how I can improve this particular project, I'd love to hear from you. Maybe you have some ideas on the coding or how we can add more to this. I would definitely love to, to do something with you. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching this particular video. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would really love if you do subscribe because that'll help me grow. And as always, thanks for watching.